Hey everybody, welcome back, it's Jordan here. Today we're going to be taking a detailed look at the LEGO Lord of the Rings Rivendell set. The set comes with 6,167 pieces, and it boasts 15 character minifigures, and then you also get some additional minifigures that are statues throughout the set. There's so many scenes sort of like jammed into the set here, and the way the characters can interact with all of those scenes is definitely pretty epic. The pieces are divided among 49 different building stages, or bags, you get three instruction manuals and two epic looking sticker sheets. Although there are stickers in the set, there are quite a few print elements as well. The build is split into three main sections and that's why there are three large instruction manuals. The first instruction manual has a write-up in the front cover. You can meet the designers and also learn a little bit about Rivendell. And it also showcases some of the original Lord of the Rings sets. So the first building stage is the tower. So I gotta say, I thoroughly enjoyed this build. It's like pure system. It's all plates, bricks, arches, snot techniques. It's just incredible building techniques, honestly. Like it was a pleasure to build. I built mine in a day and a half. Of course, I'm gonna show you everything that we built here today in full detail. I just want to capture the building process just because I thought it was really cool the way that it all came together. Okay, the roof panels, use a lot of one by one uh, tiles, I won't lie, but they were actually really easy to get straight. Now the base section of all three structures are like covered in slopes and plant life, and there's actually a new plant element. I love these fern elements. You actually put two of them together and it looks like a fern, <laughs> it's incredible. Also check this out, it's a specialty Lord of the Rings weapon pack. We've got some axes, elvish swords, shorter swords, broad swords, and of course the shards of Narsil. Continuing with the builds, we've got our base structure and that really nice colorful roof and now we have to construct the tower. Really cool circular shape. I love building circles in LIGO. It's always just so interesting to see how things like this come together and how they're constructed. It's amazing. So now that we have the tower section built, why don't we take a detailed look at it? I actually want to start by taking a look at the sticker element right over here. It is the demise of Sauron. The soldier is about to chop off his finger, which of course has the ring on it, using Narsil, and then he's going to fail to cast it back into the fiery chasm in which it came, and Elrond is going to be disappointed with this decision. I love the way that sticker element is framed on the side of the building here, and above that there's some nice detail with the shield tile, the quarter round tiles, and then also these fancy elements here, which were actually originally found in LEGO Elves sets. There's the highly detailed roof. Oh, I actually would love that building style. I might have to do something like that in a mock or something because that is simple, but it actually looks really good. Just sort of takes away from the studs and puts those uh, one by one tiles at the 45 degree angle. Beautiful roof, honestly. And then it's just capped off there with some sand green elements. And there's actually some nice detailing running down the side right here as well. Frodo's bedroom within. And then the architecture style going around the entrance here is pretty nice. And around the base of the tower, there are five of the six statues that come in this set. And these statues actually come with a new headpiece that has two different facial expressions, stone-faced and also hard stare. The tower is a very unique shape. It's a lot of fun to build. And I love the way the statues are framed there using the wheel well elements. And along the base of the tower, there's all these different slopes and plant life. Really just adds to the look and is a nice pop of color. But just the architecture style of this tower was amazing. I love the combination of different parts, curved slopes and masonry bricks and cheese wedges and different colors. You got sand green and dark gray, light gray and gold on the very tip. It just looks really, really good. And you'll also see that this plant here can actually hinge and there's an arch behind it. Well, that's actually a hidden exit and the entrance to that hidden exit is right there behind this book cabinet. In front of that book cabinet, there is this little love seat. It's got a bench, almost looks like a table with chairs that have been tucked in. And those would be represented by these curved slopes. But no, it has some pillows on it and it's actually held in spot by this one by one cylinder. It sits on an area rug and there's some candles behind on like the candle stands and this bookcase can be removed. And this is where that hidden entrance slash exit is. This was a really fun build. It just sits on a plate and it uses some snot bricks, some tiles, some modified plates, some rounded one by ones. And once again, those fancy elvish pieces. Above that, we have Frodo's bed, which is a pretty awesome build. And then there's a little chest right here. And guess what's inside that chest? 
a couple items that were given to Frodo from Bilbo. It's Sting and also Mithral. And just beside that, there's an armchair and a desk. And look at that sticker element, there and back again. Luckily for us, that area can be easily accessed because this tower is removable. Then we can peer inside and see what Bilbo's up to. There's a closer look at that desk there, candlelight on the left side and ink and quill on the right side. The book has some nice sticker detail on the front cover and is held in place by that one by one brown clip there. And you know what? I'm actually really happy to say that there's no loose pieces in this set. There's nothing really rolling around because everything is secured nicely. Speaking of Frodo and Bilbo, there's their two minifigures. And of course, we're gonna have a detailed look at all the minifigures in this review. Okay, I kept bragging to Jose about how I was building this set and how good the build was and I felt bad because she was watching the babies I was like, you know what? I'll watch the babies. You go down there and start the second stage. So here she is starting the second main stage of this build, which is the River Forge and Armory. And you know what? I'm pretty jealous. After I came down, I was like, oh my gosh, like look at the way that this is constructed. Like it's got the river and the waterfall and the base of it just looks so awesome because of all those interesting shapes and angles. Like the staircase that leads up to the gazebo that eventually gets placed on top. Everything just looks so good. Also, it's the weapons forge, right? There's like a little fire inside. It's a pretty interesting build that's just sort of locked in place there. And then there's all sorts of trees and greenery and slopes and everything that sort of case this area and really make it come to life. Now, she didn't build the entire thing. I got to build the uh, tree in the end there. And these tree builds are spectacular. I definitely have to build some more trees like this for the campground. You know, like these trees in the Lord of the Rings set are actually amazing. And then the circular shape for the base of the gazebo. I don't even know how it was constructed. Like it was like, what? And also the canopy of the gazebo and the different parts and everything that were used to create that was amazing. This section of the build was, geez, it was really good. It was sort of different from the tower and it was also different from the next section that you're gonna see as well. But now that we got this constructed, why don't we take a detailed look at it? Some beautiful water detail here. Got the waterfall with those trans blue elements and the white foam on the base of the water running through this stream here with this awesome bridge going over top. A really nice curved staircase leading up to said bridge and all sorts of plant life all around. Included in that is some mushrooms with some glow-in-the-dark cones. And those are around the base of this beautiful tree here with some really nice leaves, gold and sand blue and olive. Awesome looking tree, uh, uses some nice snot techniques right down to the base here. And I love the way that these are clipped in spot, those curved tiles to represent different fungus. Such a clever use of that piece and just add some really nice detail to this fantastic looking tree. There are so many great trees in this set. There's the entrance to the armory and matching that architecture style is the forge with the anvil in front. Love the way the roots of this tree are creeping down the side there and some really nice colors that are in tan and olive. I love the way this tree is just perched on top and the way the roots are creeping down. Just a really nice added detail. And both trees have similar building styles there, but they are different colors. Lots of different colors integrated into the leaves. And of course, there's the gazebo. The gazebo build is fantastic. The roof uses so many interesting elements. You've got life preservers in there, those like curved pieces, lots of those elvish swirly pieces that look amazing. The gazebo build was something different. However, I will say sometimes when building things like this here, it is rather difficult to get everything perfectly aligned. So getting all of these pieces that can hinge and sort of articulate all the exact same, for example, this one here, it's just a little bit difficult getting it perfect. As you can see, just due to all the different points of articulation there, mine is definitely not perfect. I should probably straighten that out. Uh, inside the gazebo, we've got another one of these love seats here. Now the gazebo is actually its own build and can be removed. And look at the circular base and how it was constructed. Very cool with all the different slopes and curved slopes and bricks and technic elements to get that interesting shape. And when you remove that, it actually exposes the armory. You don't add the weapons racks till the very end, but there are the weapon racks. 
some battle axes, elvish swords, bow and arrow, broadsword, and those can be removed as well as they're just held in by jumpers and they're a pretty basic builds with uh, some slopes and arches. But pretty nice, I like that uh, shape in the center there. You're able to create with those elements. And right here, there's just a table and also a mechanism that will sharpen a sword. Just so many different shapes and part types go into creating this set. It's crazy, and just the way that everything, you know, comes together like that, just fits in there perfectly and the stairs align. And there's just so much detail everywhere, even on the back side of the waterfall. Pretty incredible section of this build. So the first two sections that we just built there consumed 22 bags. This main section starts at bag 23 and goes right to 49. So it's pretty much twice the size as the other ones. That's a lot of building stages for the main section of the build. Hey, but you know what I will say is I've noticed that Lego has stopped doing multiple bags per building stage. So it's not like there's four bag number ones. There's number one and two and number three, four. They'll all get their own individual bags. Sometimes, in some cases, you have to crack open bags one and two. It actually makes it easier to locate the bags, I feel, when you first dump out all of these bags. Okay, but enough about that. When you look down at the build right now, you see that orange thing there? That's going to be underneath the console ring. What do you think that is? It's the Eye of Sauron. He's got an eye on the ring. Such a great Easter egg. And the way that all of this was constructed was crazy because... It's all like bricks on its side, and then you can see all of those printed pieces. That's what I was talking about when I introduced the sticker sheet there. So there's still lots of print pieces. All of those tiles are brand new print pieces for this set. The way that this was constructed with like the arches and like that work with like the white elements inside, like it was crazy. It was a fun build. Like it kept me guessing. There was not a whole lot of repetition other than the roof. I mean, putting on all of those things was sort of repetitious, but you put them on in a unique pattern. You just slap them down, boom, 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 and then you're able to straighten them out with a tile or a plate. In fact, the instruction manual actually shows you to use a tile or a plate to straighten out all of those tiles on the roof. At least they're interesting colors, you know, sand blue, sand green, tan, nougat, and then they go on the nougat plates, and then it's got the sand green top. This tree build is awesome. Like, I want to build some of these trees with, like, the upright leaves. Here's the Technic core of it. There's the leaves all sort of sprawled out. And then they get folded upward toward the top of it. And that sort of gives it its shape. And then once that's all constructed, you put the bottom branches on. And it sort of looks like this coning tree. Awesome technique. Never seen anything like it. For sure want to build some of those for the campground once again. Like, I want to give the campground an overall, but it just involves... A lot of part ordering. Now we're on to the council ring. This thing is epic. Nice circular shape and also some epic chairs using uh, popsicle sticks and also uh, nougat uh, sausages. And then the, this really neat tree that sort of droops over top of the council ring. And then once you place that in there, you just got to add some more details uh, to the back side. Uh, and also the weapons to the armory and just sort of some finalized details. And then the build is done. Let's take a look at this big chunk of the build. And then of course, we're gonna put all three together and take a look at absolutely everything. The main section of Rivendell is amazing. Once again, we've got our roof there with all the tiles mounted at the 45 degree angle. I think all of mine are straight. And then there's this incredible looking tree right here and it sort of just droops over the council ring and it's right in front of Rivendell here. It's sort of like a centerpiece tree. This thing was a really neat build. It's the big thick roots, some of those curved slopes, the different shades of brown and the roots coming through, some ferns on the base of it and the multicolored canopy. The council ring, iconic from Fellowship, right? Yeah, awesome. We got Elrond's chair right there. It's got the shield tile and the teal pieces with the nougat hot dogs or <laughs> sausages as armrests. All of these ones have some awesome part usage as well with the popsicle sticks and sausages. Yes, <laughs> that is awesome. They're just mounted at the perfect angle to get the nice semicircle going around the pedestal in the middle, which of course the ring will sit on like that there. Even the pedestal is just a really interesting build. And then the tiles underneath, like those new print elements, there's the shield tiles and the two by two tiles there. And then uh, just all the tiles going around those. It's just so nicely tiled off. 
Wow. And that can actually be removed as well. The tree is actually part of it, so you can just grab it by the tree and lift it right out, just like that there. Just the way this was built was incredible. These bricks are all on their side, right? To get that interesting shape. Some plant detail that matches up with the plant detail around the base. And of course, look at that, the Eye of Sauron. Once again, he's got his eye on the ring. And the way this fits in spot there is pretty awesome. It just integrates perfectly with all of these other elements that are on their side as well. Putting the council ring back is very easy. It just fits right in spot there. You can do it one-handed while holding a video camera. And with that removed, you can see some of the awesome architecture right back here that's very similar to the gazebo. Once again, it is rather difficult getting these all at the perfect angle. I think I did a pretty good job though. These pillars are at like an angle and they're mounted to snot bricks from the base there. And I just love this architecture style. Very Rivendell-like and it just perfectly captures that elvish architecture style. Once again, all sorts of slopes and plant life going around the base. There's a nice arch right here with some roots peeking through. A little bridge leading to this structure right here, which has a nice roof. Some interesting detail right here with one of the statue figures and also some birds. And inside there's a little table and on that table there's some lambus bread. And of course that's what fuels Frodo and Sam as they make their way to Mordor. I just really like this architecture style and once again just the shapes and the way everything came together was magnificent. Also when you look in from this side you can see another sticker element there which is like a banner hung from the wall. That amazing tree build is right behind this structure and it's actually clipped into the main structure for support. There's also this little one right here that uses candlesticks for the trunk. Near the base of those trees, you can see some steps leading up to that small structure there. Also this little bench. There is an interesting build right there in the hallway just before the stairs. I believe this is some sort of elven telescope. I do have a real life image of it, but I still can't make out what it actually is. Of course, the roof has the same style as the others, capped off with these green modified plates there, and also some nice tiles on the side there. And then they also have this design element that's sort of clipped onto the side as well. On the back side, we've got two sticker elements. I believe this reference is the Lord of the Rings TV show. Could be wrong. I don't want to give away any spoilers, but I'm pretty sure that's right. And this, from my research, is the Fair City of Gondolin. I don't believe it makes an appearance in the movies. I could be incorrect about those two sticker elements, and I do apologize for that if I am. On this side here, we have one other awesome sticker element, which is the creation of the rings. And that's actually right on the opposite side of that banner that was hung, so it actually covers up the back unstickered side of that element. So there is a staircase right here with a little handrail. There's no studs on the staircase because many figures can grab onto that handrail and be mounted in position. And up here we have the statue with the shards of Narsil. So that is the sixth and final statue and it stands on a pretty neat pedestal there. Obviously this is an open back so you can see all the details within. It is not modular so for example the roof does not come off very easily. You'd have to remove some Technic pins and the floors do not come apart either. I'm happy that it's an open back because we can see all of these details within. Included in those details is a map of Middle Earth on this table here. And this one is Mordor. You've got Mount Doom and the Dark Tower. However I can't quite make out what this one is here. All three of these map elements are stickers and they can be found in Elrond's study, which is this whole tiled off area here. Overall, there's not a whole lot going on in here. Like there's some candles and some tables there with the maps, but just not a whole lot of things going on there. There is some really nice architecture style with the arches and these pillars. That sort of matches the whole vibe, but maybe there could have been a few more things within the interior here. Before we combine all three sections, let's take a detailed look at the 15 character minifigures that this set comes with. We get five elves total, the two on the left here that come with some nice printed elements and also nice hair elements with those ears as well, the pointed ears here. Always a nice touch on a minifigure, right? Uh, they are just classified as generic elves. Then we have Legolas right there with his bow and arrow. Pretty awesome, Legolas minifigure, right? Elrond in red, and then Arwen. 
Aragorn beside Ghibli with his battle axes, Gloin, Boromir, Sam with his frying pan, Frodo, Pippin, Merry, and then Gandalf on the end. And of course, you can't forget about Bilbo. I almost did. I left him up in the tower there. So all of the minifigures, except for the bearded ones, have alternate faces. The bearded ones being Gandalf, Gloin, and Gimli. These faces are just a little bit more distressed, specifically Bilbo's and Frodo's. Pretty awesome. Frodo just got hit by the Nazgul, and Bilbo just saw the ring. <laughs> so that's pretty neat. Uh, here you can see Gimli's alternate hair there. Yeah, pretty cool minifigures. They also come with some additional accessories. So they can sit in the chairs around the council ring. And they're actually little mini builds that replace their legs and they have printed curved slopes. And Gandalf actually has the same thing as well. And after you equip your minifigures with weapons and fill the armory, you're actually left over with some additional weapon elements. So that's good. And you can switch up the legs on the hobbits with these little mini builds right here so that they can sit in the chairs as well. I just wanted to review the minifigures before we uh, combine all three sections because of course I'm going to put them all in their appropriate positions around this set. I'm trying to set up the Fellowship of the Ring, but I am having trouble getting them all sitting on their chairs just because it's hard to reach your hand in there and they can't actually uh, clip into their chairs, so it is rather difficult. Also, when you place them into their chairs, you have to remove their capes. But after some patience, you can set up a pretty cool scene. Look at that, Gimli's about to uh, try and destroy the ring with his axe. Got the Fellowship of the Ring happening there. You do have to remove their capes and accessories, right? So there is a big pile of stuff at the end there. I'd probably just put that all in a Ziploc bag and then tuck it somewhere into the set where you can't see it and then put it on display just so that stuff's with the set. But yeah, let's uh, attach it. So you just line these um, two pins right there with the holes and clip that together. Then you'll see a seam in the roof there. You just have to push that in because there's a little component there that will sort of make it seamless. So that's awesome. And then this one here is even easier. It's just two Technic pins that line up with the holes and it slides in spot just like that there. And we've got some pretty cool scenes, right? The Fellowship of the Ring. These guys right over here about to have maybe second breakfast, 11sies, lunch, I'm not sure. Looking to eat some food there. We've got uh, Bilbo on the bridge, Gloin right over here, and then those two other elves by the forge. And then Arwen up top here in the gazebo. So it's pretty cool. You can move the minifigures around and create different scenes uh, found in Rivendell. And when you clip this side together, this entrance right here actually lines up with the hallway leading through Elrond's study through the center of the set. And here's what it looks like from the backside when all three sections are connected. These walls go together seamlessly there. And these all line up nicely. And this little building here, a little structure lines up with the bridge which is pretty nice as well. So it looks good from the front and back side. I mean, some people aren't gonna like the open back, but I don't mind it just so once again, you can see all of those interior details. So overall, I know this set is expensive. It's like 500 US dollars. It has over 6,000 pieces. It comes with 15 minifigures plus all of those statues. So 21 minifigures if you wanna include those. The building experience was fast. Like it went together very quickly. But it was a pleasure to build. I love the way that everything came together. And it's a LOTR set. It's a really nice 18 plus or creator expert icons LOTR set, which I think is epic. I think we've been asking for something like this for quite some time and uh, LEGO delivered. Maybe we'll be getting some smaller sets in the lineup. I hope we do. Uh, because not everybody's going to be able to get a $500 Lord of the Rings set. Not everybody can justify spending that much money on this. Uh, is it worth the money? I mean, there's a lot of good things going on for it. And Star Wars sets with the same piece count are probably more money, right? So if you think of it that way, I would say that yes, it is. But that's just my opinion. Uh, thank you once again, LEGO, for sending me this set and giving me the opportunity to reveal and review it. Appreciate that. Everybody let me know what you think of the set by commenting below. Remember, like, subscribe, and stay tuned for some more great stuff. And farewell.